Hey everyone, it's Mr. Lafarga, and today we're going to be talking about the Catholic Church in medieval Europe. So the first thing you're going to want to do is set up your ISNs, and we'll use the next slide to see what you need to write. So you're going to write Catholic Church vocabulary, and what we want you to do for this assignment is to please draw a picture that represents the definition of the vocab word. So the full vocab list, one and two. Um, and your vocab words for this lesson are going to be clergy, Emperor Henry IV, Pope Gregory VII, religious order, and monasteries. And you're going to answer the questions from the slides on the other page of your notebook. And our objective for this assignment is that you will be introduced to the structure of the Catholic Church and how it influenced the decisions made in government during feudal Europe. So Christianity is the religion started by Jesus Christ. Uh, followers of Christianity follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. As Christianity grew, it looked upon as a threat to the Roman government. It, sorry, it was looked upon as a threat to the Roman government. So Jesus was put to death and Christianity was outlawed. So in around the 3rd century CE, the Roman Emperor Diocletian decided that the Empire of Rome was too big, so he decided to split it into a Western and Eastern Empire, and the capitals of those respective empires were Rome and Constantinople. So Constantine led Constantinople um, and the Eastern Empire, and he made Christianity the official religion of the Eastern Empire. Then in the year 1054, the Great Schism happened. That's the event in which the Catholic Church split into two, and it created two distinct churches in the West and the East. So in the West, there was the Roman Catholic Church, and the head of this church was called the Pope. He's the final word before God, and his word is even above the word of the emperors and kings. In the East, they followed the Eastern Orthodox Church. The supreme leader of that church was the emperor, and the emperor's word was held as the highest voice. There's also a host of other differences between the two churches, but these are all you need to know for now. The power of the church. The medieval Catholic church became very powerful. The church and its officials had ties to nobility in Europe. Often church officials and members of the royal families were one and the same. The church became very wealthy because of the land that it owned, which was most of Europe. Churches soon had more money than kings and nobles, and they wielded even more power. Okay, so here we have the structure of the church. Um, so at the very top of the clergy, there was the Pope. And he, again, was the last word before the word of God. Below the Pope were the cardinals. Um, they were the second in charge, and they oversaw different areas of the church. Third were the archbishops. Fourth were the bishops. And then finally, at the bottom of the clergy were the local priests. Hmm, any of this sound familiar? What other system in medieval Europe was similar in structure to the Catholic Church? Use the paradigm to explain the similarities. Religious orders of the Catholic Church. Religious orders. A religious order is a sort of spin-off of the Catholic Church. For instance, monks live in a monastery. In that monastery, they are required to perform specific duties without question, like copying the Bible, cleaning, meditating, chanting, cooking, learning from other church leaders, and spreading the gospel. That was the uh, monastic rule. Remember the rules? 
Monks, men, live in monasteries. Nuns, women, live in the covent, convent. Friars lived as beggars and traveled from town to town. Francis de Assisi began the Franciscan order in 1200. He later earned sainthood. He asked followers to give up their possessions and serve as teachers. Now on the pear deck, we want you to list some reasons why people would live in a medieval monastery and also answer what types of duties were performed in a monastery. Universities. During this time in Europe, most people, including royalty, were illiterate. If you were part of the church, whether it be part of the clergy or a religious order, there was a good chance you could read. But you had to learn to read the Bible and make copies and create illuminated manuscripts. Eventually, bishops set up schools and taught the sons of wealthy nobles. Thanks to Muslim scholars who preserved Greek writings, students were taught Latin and Greek philosophies. Click on the link to see more. The patron saint of students and all universities, Thomas Aquinas. In the mid-1200s, an Italian scholar, Thomas Aquinas, started studying Aristotle. He said that faith and logic could coexist. Aquinas developed the study, or sorry, the idea of natural law, which said, law came from God and was about moral behavior. Be sure to watch these videos to find out more. Classroom order. Now that you've learned a bit about religious orders, it's time to create your own order. You and your group will create a classroom order. Think about what would have happened in a religious order and the rules and procedures they'd employ. Come up with a name for your classroom order and a list of rules and procedures that followers of your classroom order must live by. When you're done, create a slideshow that describes your order. Here's some examples. You must come prepared. You must take a vow of silence. You must perform specific duties like notes, cleaning, studying, etc. All right, that's the lesson.